Hello, and welcome to episode 11 of the Learning Guitar series. In episode 10, we introduced the shape of A, uh, and of course, transposed it in, uh, in all keys, and we looked at the Ionian scales that goes with it. So in the case of C major, that's the finger pattern we're looking at. Uh, in this particular lesson, instead, we're going to look at all the arpeggios that we can derive from this particular uh, shape. As usual, you might want to download the PDF, and if you can have a look at it while I discuss with you what to do, it's even better, but uh, otherwise, like, you know, watch the lesson and then, you know, try and apply it. Today is another one of those very hot day. I'm already sweating. <laughs> so, first of all, try it. Um, I'm gonna start from C major triad, so in the shape of A, we're looking at this, and the way we practice it is chromatic up and down. Uh, tell yourself what key you're in, so that you're training your photographic memory while you're training your muscle memory. So we're gonna do it descending, so, uh, sorry, ascending. Of course, like go, you know, all the way up the neck and then the neck. So, for example, because this root note is A, now this is an A triad, right? So B flat, B, C, and again, up and down, and reversed, uh, sorry, alternated, so. Seven. So this is B, C sharp major seven, D major seven, E flat, E major seven, F, F major seven, F sharp, G, A flat, A, B flat, B, C, C sharp. Okay? And same thing backwards. Automatically, as you're doing it this way, you're also training your string skipping, you know, which can be bad. alternated so of course like you might want to go all the way up the neck and then down and make it a little bit shorter so that you know we don't spend uh, hours on this uh, then we have major six so one three five six same concept. So this one would be flat. B. And backwards. After the six, we can practice, for example, added nine, like we did the, for uh, the shape of G. Okay. The only thing different when we were in the shape of G, our nine was here, which kind of made it easier to practice, even like in one direction, okay, like this or, or reversed. The problem now is that if we play the nine with this finger, now we have to come back up here. See what I mean? Which makes it kind of awkward. Still, you might want to practice it. Of course, you're not going to achieve incredible speed with this, right? And also, you might want to think of this as a possible alternative. So you might want to use a different finger for that. Same thing going backwards. Right? 
uh, or using the first finger as alternative, right? So that when you're here, this is the finger that goes for the ninth as opposed to this one. Sorry, as opposed to this one. Alternated is not really an issue, right? And once again, it's good to practice it because uh, you're practicing your strings keeping at the same time. into the um, seven nine so one three five seven nine in this case I tend not to practice them anymore uh, ascending descending I tend to do them just reversed because I, I, I find uh, sorry alternated because I find it that that's the way I use them most of the time when I'm actually playing so I tend to go directly for this kind of exercise as opposed to of course you can do this right there's nothing wrong with that as I say again it's a good practice and backwards. The only thing is like I noticed that how uh, the moment we have all these exercises accumulating, so now by now you have four shapes and uh, everything that goes with it. Uh, you know, going through all the um, intervals and triads and then the arpeggios and then the chords. We start accumulating hours and hours of practice before we even play. So I, I tend to streamline a bit the things that I practice more often. So in this case, I might skip doing this because I realize I don't use it that often. But this kind of uh, way of playing has alternated definitely more often. So I tend to do this. Same thing for the 6 9 kind of arpeggio. I tend to do exactly the same. Uh, after that, we have major 11. Um, not used very often, as we'll see in the future when we study lady and maybe sharp 11 tend to be a little bit more musical, but nevertheless worth studying, especially as we lead um, towards the, um, the modal Ionian arpeggio. So three, uh, oh sorry, root, three, five, seven, nine, eleven. So you have this. that we have like uh, the 13 so now we have uh, the modal arpeggio so so all basically the vertical structure of this, the actual scale so this is your scale one two three four five six seven root note and now you have one three five seven nine eleven thirteen i'm borrowing this note from the next shape to have the octave as a reference so we end up with this second octave so again triads one three five now this is what like two seconds of a discussion um, we could play it like this we can also play it like this we could play it like this I tend to play it with two fingers most of the time to create even more separation but I can do it both ways so Again, whatever you find more comfortable, I just thought it was important to point it out. Same thing on the way back. As opposed to... And then, of course, alternate. Um, then you have your major 7. Here is your major seven, one, three, five, major seven.
then again, you could do it just with one finger. Okay, and last but not least, major six. So one, three, five, six. And again, you could do it first this way. octaves one so one three five seven one three five seven so C sharp D E flat E so F major seven Six, one, three, five, six, one, three, five, six. So you have this. Completes, I think, major, yeah. Uh, complete this kind of part, and now we're on page two. And we can harmonize after exercise four, you have the harmonized on uh, Ionian motor arpeggio, which is basically playing playing the, the, the motor arpeggio group of four. So. System version of the arpeggio. So now we're exploiting the entire, you know, the entire neck so far. We, we started every arpeggio from the root, so we kind of ignored the top string. In this case, we are starting from the fifth. So for C major, we have fifth major seven root note three five major seven root note three five. For convenience, in terms of practice to a metronome, I've stopped it here. Although there is also a major seven up here if you want. So you have this. If you wanted to, you can elongate it with an extra major seven, right? So I tend to practice it this way. So like at the end of the day, if this was you know G major, now this is a major seven arpeggio, right? In the, who's using the cage system? This would be major seven, major six, major nine, seven nine, six nine, uh, eleven, thirteen on root note. That kind of recaps it. Um, after that, we have the same modal arpeggio practiced in group of three and group of four, which is also very useful. So we're starting again. This is the arpeggio we're practicing, but we're practicing group of three notes at a time. So forth and so on, right? 
In group of four, is after the same thing, but this time is one, two, three, four note. Page two. Uh, now we have uh, exercises which are designed to facilitate the vertical transition between shapes. What I mean by that is finding different chords within the same, let's call it, cage or area of, of the neck. In this case, the progression now you came out with is G major shape of G, C major shape of uh, A, uh, F major the shape of D, and then you have D major in the shape of C, okay? Since these are the fourth shape we, we studied so far. Uh, if you look at the exercise, the first eight bars, you can actually loop those one if you want, or you can start moving chromatically. I'm gonna show you both the kind of solution. So, let's say we start from G, major seven, C major, F major, Go back to G if you want. So you can, you know, so you can kind of fix it in your, in your brain. That's F, D. Back to G. C major. F, D. Or we can start moving it chromatically exactly like it's written. So after having done, say G, C, F, D major. Now we do A flat. Okay. Uh, D flat. actually I just notice it D major and then it will go into F sharp or F um, G A. sorry that was a, that is a mistake in the PDF I'll have to correct it so basically we're going A exercise instead on page three is um, designed to kind of facilitate the, the horizontal connection so now we, you are in the same key but you're moving across the neck so let's take G for example Let's say you wanted to try, say, A. At the moment, we still don't have the five shapes. So it's going to be soon there. But if it was A, it would start here. Then that's your second shape. Your third shape. Your fourth shape. Third shape.
So in terms of practice, as usual, we're looking for a progression that allows us uh, to, to maybe like practice all four shapes uh, at the same time. And it maybe like something else you want to do on the side, maybe just loop a single chord. So I don't know, D major, and then just try to play using the arpeggios. Uh, when we practice arpeggios, you want to limit yourself to only use those, not combining scales and arpeggios in the process. Uh, I'll give you a short example of what I mean. So maybe let's look at D majors. This is D major 7. So by limiting yourself, I mean, you know, these are your triads. instead of a progression and I thought in this case to do maybe like I don't know um, C major I'm gonna use C major 7 uh, going into F major I'm gonna use F major 7 just I'm gonna take keep all the chords as kind of major 7 into B flat so shape of D I'm gonna use this particular shape uh, as opposed to, I could use this I just like to keep the bass consistent uh, into A flat major seven, so that's our uh, shape of C. So shape of B, shape of A, shape of D, uh, shape of C, and I'm gonna loop it. Three, four. stay on arpeggio notes, right? B flat, A flat,
it's enough. Um, so, I hope it kind of makes sense. And uh, as I said, trying to spend as much time uh, on playing than you spend on practicing, because after all, you know, uh, that's the objective. Uh, playing is the objective. So this concludes uh, lesson 11. Lesson 12, we're going to look at the chords. Uh, so we're going to kind of close the circle on, uh, on the A shape. Uh, we've done the scale, the interval studies and triadic studies and all that. We looked now at the arpeggios. We're going to look at, at possible chord shapes. Okay? Uh, in the meanwhile, I hope uh, you're still safe and, uh, you know, pandemic and whatnot and uh, well thank you very much for for following this lesson and uh, if you have any question about it please feel free to add it in the comments and when i have time i'll, I'll be more than happy to to answer it okay thank you very much <laughs>